G'day ladies and gents and welcome to War Thunder with Mags and welcome aboard the MiG-17. Yes, now you get to see why I haven't been posting videos or that many videos for the last couple of days. Why there's been a bit of deadpan in my content. I have been grinding the hell out of this thing and I finally got it. So what I'm going to show you today is the third match I ever flew out in the MiG-17. It's not a particularly impressive match in terms of kills, I only take one kill for it. But I think it does showcase the capabilities of this aircraft and I'm hoping I'll be able to break a few of the misconceptions about it as well. So first things first, details. This is a first impressions video. I have played out my 10 free repairs as I do on any of my first impressions videos. The plane is stock as it always is in these videos and what I'm having a look at is the plane that you are going to unlock when you finally finish your grind to it. What are you going to get in dead stock format? Well. At this point, if you're unlocking this plane, you've already got the MiG-15Bs, you've probably spent some time in that plane, and you're probably going to be in for a little bit of a shock. It's not a MiG-15. It doesn't fly like a MiG-15. It's actually got very little to do in its flight performance with the MiG-15. This plane flies more like a cross between a Sabre and a Hunter. So, starting from takeoff, the plane doesn't get its speed up as fast as the MiG-15s, it's hardly an issue with your takeoff time, but it is something you will notice almost straight away. When you first get wheels up, most MiG pilots have a tendency to roll off the runway very quickly, almost as soon as you've got your wheels off the ground. Don't do that, this plane doesn't have a particularly great roll rate, it's not bad, but it's not a MiG-15. It also doesn't handle as well at low speeds as a MiG-15. If you try and do that early rollover, well, I have seen MiG-17 pilots coming out for their first flights and smacking it into the runway, trying to do that. Try and get your airspeed up, then take it into a high angle climb. It's exactly the same as the MiG-15 in this particular area. Once you've got its speed wound up, you'll notice its acceleration is slightly slower than the MiG-15 up until you hit about 580 to 600 kilometers an hour then it really starts to get itself going once it's got itself up to speed you can take a high angle climb and you'll punch your way out to 15,000 feet or above with very little issue at all it is a MiG in this area its climb rate is phenomenal now one thing you will notice with the aircraft is it does have a massive vertical stabilizer and a massive rudder as a result I found that at lower speeds I was constantly tweaking the mouse because the rudder would lock to the left or right while I was flying the aircraft. Once I got it up over about 400 kilometers an hour it was good but at lower speeds it did want to yaw a lot. So what about its maneuverability? Well according to the stat card it's more maneuverable than the MiG-15 biz. This isn't exactly true. That big rudder on the back of it gives it a very quick virage time. It's the time it takes to do a 360 while maintaining level flight. And it can do that faster than the MiG-15, that is true. But when it comes to actual manoeuvring performance in a dogfight, the MiG-15 is a better plane. This thing, as I said, it sort of sits somewhere between a Sabre and a Hunter. You can manoeuvre in it, you probably don't really want to, however. At the time of this battle, I didn't realise this small fact, so you're going to see some reasons as to why very, very soon. The MiG-17's optimal manoeuvring speed, at least by stock, seems to be somewhere between around 580 to 650 kilometers an hour. Outside of that, it's not great. Inside of that small zone, you can get some surprisingly quick snap turns in, but it's also an area where the plane doesn't seem to want to maintain energy. Doing those maneuvers, it'll drop a lot of energy very quickly, and that's something you don't want to do in this plane. Much like the Hawker Hunter, this is a plane that survives on its speed. Almost all of the kills I've got in this aircraft so far have been keeping the plane at as close to maximum speed as I possibly could, always having an energy advantage on the enemy, and basically just running them down until they made a mistake. The MiG-17 starts to redline at about 1,050 kilometers an hour, but it'll stretch its legs out to just pass 1,100 kilometers an hour without any risk to the plane at all. Out of a sharp dive into level flight, it'll maintain just sub 1100 kilometers an hour with no problems in level flight and be able to maintain that for as long as you want. This makes it the second fastest plane in War Thunder and only just. It is slightly faster than both the F-86 F-2. The CL-13 is an interesting one. It is faster than a CL-13, or at least it does appear to be faster than a CL-13. However, the CL-13's acceleration can often make the appearance of the CL actually being the quicker aircraft. Unless you get the drop on a CL, it will be able to out-accelerate you, 
and you will run out of map before you manage to find your top speed why it is pulling away on its. Well, that is unless, of course, you get Spain, in which case you've got more than enough map to finally wind it in. As the Hunter is the slightly faster aircraft, again, unless you get the drop on one, they will outrun you, unless they're putting themselves into a climb. In this case, I was trying to chase down the Hunter that is in front of me right now, and I was actually slowly pulling it down. It seems the MiG-17's phenomenal climb rate coupled with its speed, if a Hunter tries to climb away from a MiG-17, it won't be able to. Something that the hunter I was following seemed to realise fairly quickly and he points his nose down and immediately starts opening the gap again. So, since it was taking me too long to catch the hunter, I decided to engage the F-86 F-25 and what you're seeing here is absolutely maximum manoeuvring in this aircraft while at speed. Its turn rate is not great. As I said, above the optimal speed or below the optimal speed, this thing... it's not built to fight like this. Now. Energy retention, you will notice how far I managed to climb. Now this is just opinion, I haven't had a chance to test between the two, but I'm of the opinion at the moment that the MiG-17 has better 90 degree vertical energy retention than the MiG-15 biz. You point this thing's nose in the sky and in every case that I've had an opportunity to do so so far and have a MiG-15 try and follow me, they've ran out of speed and I've still been going. Now I see the Hunter come in from the left hand side, so turn, pull in under the aircraft and then take it back into the vertical. It was about at this time that I was starting to work out how to fly the plane. I was starting to build my opinions about it. Take it into the vertical, snap it back around and re-put it back into a dive. The Hunter goes vertical at the same time, neither one of us can turn hard enough to get guns on the other. So I go underneath the Hunter, the Hunter goes over the top of me. But he was spending just a little bit too long watching my aircraft, doesn't see the second MiG-17 coming from behind, and as he's trying to complete his rollover at his lowest energy point, MiG-17 just executes him. But that was a really good example one-on-one -on -one with the Hunter and the MiG-17, and you can see the similarities in their turning circles at speed. They're two aircraft that are quite comparable in performance. So next up, the air brakes on the MiG-17. This will surprise a lot of MiG-15 pilots as well. You finally got a pair that actually work and work well. The air brakes on the MiG-17 are almost as good as those on the F-86 Sabre. This thing has some great speed control to around 400 kilometers an hour if you do need to try and force an overshoot. Much like the MiG-15 Biz, however, once you drop below 400 kilometers an hour, the air brakes seem to have very little effect and you'll have trouble bleeding speed on approach to runways for landing. So nothing much has changed there, it's the same as the MiG-15, but above speeds of 400 kilometers an hour, you'll be able to do a lot more with your air brake than you were able to in the past. And here you can see the top speed in action, closing in on the F-86F, even before it started trying to climb to clear the mountains, I was still closing in on the aircraft. This is just a faster plane. This thing is bloody fast. Actually, this is probably the best way of describing what is the major difference between the MiG-17 and the MiG-15. Well, it's a plane that sacrifices maneuverability in exchange for speed. And then we come to the guns, and exactly the same problems as with the stock MiG-15 and MiG-15 biz here. Pretty much the same guns as both the previous MiGs, they shotgun when stocked just like the previous MiGs, they have almost no ammunition, same as the previous MiGs, and the stock ammo belts are horrible, They're the same as the previous MiGs. The very first upgrade that I'm working on at the moment is on the 23mm cannon belts just so I can get two of the guns working reasonably well. Now as you can see here its turn rate isn't all that bad in that 550 to 650 IAS zone but as soon as I start going beyond 650 you can see the plane starts to stiffen up and I have trouble keeping track of the F-86. The air brakes however did prevent me from overshooting, they kept me behind the Sabre at all times. The Sabre was air braking as well, so brakes definitely pass a performance test. Now why its control authority at over 800 IAS is actually quite good, as you can see it doesn't really fly centralised, it sort of wallows a little bit, which is, it makes it even more difficult putting an already difficult set of guns on target. And this is what I was talking about with kills. Every single kill that I've gotten in this plane so far was when the pilots finally make a mistake. In this particular case, the F-86 Sabre pulled up hard, G-locked his aircraft, and then went into a stall while he was G-locked, and it span out of control, making himself an easy target. Now, you will notice in that turn following the Sabre, I didn't G-lock. Now, I do have a max skilled crew. My Russian crew is fully upgraded and does have maximum G skill. So that definitely does help, but I don't think that was everything in this particular engagement. 
Speed for speed, all variants of the F86 Sabre do turn slightly faster than the MiG-17, regardless of what speed that's at. However, that appears to be in the MiG-17's advantage. While it can't turn as well, there seems to be a magic line on the G-Lock mechanic that if you pass, you start going into blackout. The MiG-17, even at speed, I had quite a lot of difficulties blacking myself out in this aircraft. I had to really be aggressive, far more aggressive than I probably ever should be in an aircraft, to trigger it off. And those times when I was starting to black out, it was always very controllable. Quickly straightening the mouse or just letting backing up on the shift for just a moment would seem to relieve the blackout. And here's actually a perfect example of it. I've just lost control of the aircraft. To lose control in that particular situation, I had to pull the aircraft at almost 900 kilometers an hour into a vertical rollover into a loop and then aileron roll through the loop in order to drop myself on the tail of the Sabre that was in front of me, hitting and holding 11 Gs in the process for a sustained period of time. That's far more than you should ever have to pull in an aircraft with this particular flight style. And as I said, it seems to benefit the MiG-17 that its maneuverability is slightly lacking. It means that under general maneuvers, it's actually very hard to hit a situation where you're going to black your aircraft out. So I guess as we come to the close of this video, what you really want to know, is it broken overpowered? Um, until I've got all the upgrades on it, I don't know. But as a stock aircraft, no. As a stock aircraft, it is comparable to something like the Hunter in its flight styles. It's extremely fast, it's a hit and run aircraft, it's not something you should be maneuvering in. In every battle I participated in, the MiG-15 Biz always outscored the MiG-17 in terms of kills. However, more MiG-15 pilots died in comparison to MiG-17s every single time as well. So ladies and gents, I'm just gonna close this up with my first ever kill in the MiG-17, which was from the battle right before this one. Hope you enjoyed the video, click like if you do, subscribe if you wanna see more, fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies.